This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video, we're going to be talking about two new cards spoiled for release in the OCG's new Fairy Structure Deck R that is going to be coming out sometime in the future. Now, one of the things that we had been wondering about if we were going to be getting was a Sanctuary in the Sky retrain, and... We essentially do. The two new cards that have been spoiled for release are the new Continuous Spell card, Sanctuary of Parshath, and the new Trap card, the new Counter Trap card, Reincarnating Parshath. So, we've got these two cards to discuss and talk about, and basically just discuss some things that can be done with them. So, without any further ado, let's not waste any time, and let's just start talking about them. The first card... Sanctuary of Parshath is a continuous spell card, and its effect is this card's name becomes the Sanctuary in the Sky while it is on the field or in the graveyard. All fairy monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. Set spells and traps on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects, and neither player can target them with card effects. <laughs> no Twin Twister for you! But anyway, last effect is once per turn you can target three fairy monsters and or counter traps in your graveyard with different names. Place them on top of your deck in any order. So, whoa! Oh boy. Alright, so, it kind of sucks straight out of the gate that you can't search this card with uh, Zeradius because it's only treated as the Sanctuary in the Sky when it's on field or in Graveyard, so you, that was kind of a big thing to like try and summon the big new Parshath, was putting Zeradius in the Grave just because it was a fairy you could discard to search a card that worked naturally with the rest of your deck as well. But, this is a better The Sanctuary in the Sky that you can hard draw. It does take up a continuous spell or trap card zone, so that also kind of hinders a little bit because that means there's less places for you to set your counter traps. But, at the same time, it is kind of fair, considering if you're able to put Sanctuary in your field spell zone and then set 5, or put an Ariadne and set 4, then that is where some potential abusing nature comes into play. Uh, whereas, this being a continuous spell takes up another slot, which means that, in essence, if you're playing Ariadne and you play this card, this card essentially is going to take up another spell or trap card zone, meaning the most you could set in that situation would be three counter traps, which is at least a little bit more fair than setting five. It's still probably not fair at all, but it is at least a little better. Looking at it from the opposite side of the, the, uh, the, the defeatist sort of uh, sort of look that we could put onto this card, but it allows you to put counter traps and fairies from your graveyard on top of your deck in any order, allowing you to draw them, which is actually really cool as well. It's essentially not really like a true Draco Phoenix uh, type card, besides the true Draco Phoenix, in that it doesn't let you draw a card, it doesn't let you recoup any advantage, but the way you're going to be recouping advantage is if you have Bountiful Artemis on the field, or if your Bountiful Artemis has died, you can shuffle it or not even shuffle, just place it on top of your deck alongside two counter traps, and then draw it next turn. So, it's a, it's a way to recur your things that you have been losing. The attack gain is definitely real. I think Bountiful Artemis has 1,700 attack, if I remember correctly, so it would go up to a 2k beater, which is pretty respectable. All the other fairies have pretty decent attack stats in the 1,500 to 1,800 range in terms of the fairies that are good for the counter fairy uh, archetype. But this can't be searched by terraforming, it can't be searched by Xerdeus, but it can be searched by the new Parshath monster, so there is that to consider as well. All in all, it's a pretty well designed Sanctuary in the Sky retrain, although you do take damage now if you have this card and not real Sanctuary in the Sky on the board, so I mean, there is that as well. There's a, there's a few things that make this card objectively different and a little bit worse off than a regular field spell Sanctuary in the Sky is because it takes up your spell and trap card zone and all that, but it gives you the added ability as well of your monsters getting attack gains and your set spells and traps can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, so your opponent can't twin twister them, your opponent can't MST them, your opponent can't do anything to them other than out this card and then deal with the traps, but the thing is that at that point they had to have multiple outs and it just makes the overall strength of the counter fairy deck a lot more potent in terms of how things have to be dealt with. That means like, they can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. That means if by some weird reason we get Heavy Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster back on a future ban list, you can't even use that because they can't be destroyed by card effects and then they also can't be targeted. So like, there's a lot of good things this does for the deck that kind of make it a potential problem, but at the same time, they designed it well. Being a continuous spell can't be searched by Zeradius at this point in time. Uh, unless they give us a Zeradius retrain that allows us to search 
that, but otherwise we have to dedicate ourselves to searching it with the Parshath cards, mainly the main new Parshath boss monster, uh, Arch Angel, Arch Angel Parshath, I believe its name was, can't remember. It's been a while since I looked at that card, but anyway, the next card that we have to talk about is the new counter trap, Reincarnating Parshath. And it is a counter trap, as I've already said, and its effects are, when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, reveal one counter trap card in your hand, discard one card, and pay 1,000 life points. Negate the activation, and if you do, shuffle that card into the deck. Then, you can special summon one Parshath monster from your deck, or extra deck. So, this can summon Avenging Knight Parshath from your extra deck, so that's pretty cool. But, it's got such a weird condition. When a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, so it negates anything, reveal a counter trap in your hand, discard one card, it doesn't have to be the counter trap you revealed, but you discard a card, you have to reveal a counter trap, and then either discard that counter trap or a different card, and then pay a thousand life points to negate the activation, and if you do, shuffle that card into the deck. Now, obviously, you don't have to do that sort of thing. You don't have to discard the card, pay the thousand, or reveal the counter trap if you have Ariadne in your scale, because that is all part of the cost. Um, because Ariadne, well, you do have to reveal a counter trap, but um, Ariadne specifically says you do not have to discard cards for the activation of counter traps or pay life points for the activation of counter traps. So you don't have to pay a thousand or discard a card. You would still have to reveal a counter trap, though, even with Ariadne in your scale. But it negates the activation and effect of anything. So essentially, this is another solemn judgment. It's another ultimate providence. It's another divine punishment. So <laughs> that's pretty good. And it also summons any Parshath monster from your deck or extra deck. So this can summon the big bastard out of your deck, uh, unless there's something that's uh, preventing it. I can't remember if its summoning conditions are exact. No, it, I don't think it does have exact summoning conditions that would need to be ignored, because you could tribute summon it, if I remember correctly. And you could probably summon it off your hand off Valhalla. I haven't read Archangel Parshath in a long time, since I did the card review on it, but I think you can summon it from your deck off this card. If not, you can still summon Avenging Knight Parshath out of your extra deck if you decide to run it. I mean, if you're running this card, you might as well have it in your extra deck, honestly. But also, uh, you could summon regular Air Knight Parshath out of your deck if you wanted to. I mean, you could be playing that card. All depends on if uh, the new big Parshath can't be summoned or not, which I'm pretty sure, like 90% sure it can. Not 100% sure, though, because I haven't read the card in several weeks. But this card's really cool. It's another, like I said, Divine judgment divine or divine punishment solemn judgment uh ultimate providence type card it works very well with ariadne in your scale it seems like it's almost tr sort of trying to make you really want to play ariadne which is interesting uh there might be some other cards that come out that work with ariadne more specifically uh but essentially these cards these two cards are both really good and they're parshath themed they're specifically built around Parshath as a theme rather than counter fairies so I wonder if that is going to be like the dedicated future of how counter fairies are going to be built we still have a lot of cards left in this structure deck that could be spoiled to us we only know like half of the contents if even that of this uh, structure deck we know a, few, a bunch of the reprints but I think we still only know maybe about 15 to 20 cards for the last I looked at the list uh, before this video so there's a lot that could potentially be coming out as well as new other cards to support the rest of this theme and if they're going parshath themed with the counter fairy stuff then that could be potentially a pretty big force to be reckoned with but anyway let me know what you guys thoughts are on these cards in the comments down below i think they're very 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 good cards they might be a little bit too well designed if anything this might be a big problem <laughs> like this might actually be a problem specifically the fact that sanctuary says you can't target or destroy the set traps with card effects that means that literally all of the backer removal in the game doesn't work on these cards that could be a potential problem but i digress let me know what you guys thoughts are on these cards in the comments down below as i've already said but anyway anyway as always thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are as i've already said multiple times in the comments down below i'm always really curious of you guys' opinions of new cards specifically i'm not quite sure why i guess it's just the 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 inner social like social butterfly in me even though that probably doesn't exist either i'm not really that much of a social person but i like listening to people it's weird i don't know Regardless, like, comment, subscribe as you've already as you already do essentially. Links as always are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly. The Patreon is the best way to do so. Special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me this month on Patreon. You make a lot of things I'm capable of doing on this channel happen. Allow me to dedicate more time into the nonsense. And if you are looking to support me on Patreon, then you can look in the reward tiers. I'm doing a 10-pack at least giveaway of the most recent set, Code of the Duelist, at the end of of this month it'll be the beginning of september when i do the giveaway and all you have to do is support me on patreon to be auto entered into 
that giveaway. It's a raffle style giveaway, so there's that to consider as well. Also, the $2 reward tier gets you into my private Discord server with the rest of those individuals and myself, where we just talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! on a daily basis and other fandoms as well. So definitely go check that out if you're interested in contributing to supporting something that you like and if you want to get some little reward tier type things back to you. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are again in the comments down below. And Thanks for, thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.